us a little bit about the story of this tunnel. What did, how did you get the funding for it? And then maybe just some things you would do differently. Hey, you all, Farmer Jesse here. So I went down to uh, Stonehouse Market Farm and saw my buddy Jackson who helped me start No-Till Growers. And we've been talking from the very beginning about how important it is for young farmers to see sort of uncurated things about a farm. Not just showing you all of our successes, but some of our failures and some of that stuff that's kind of in between. So I went down to Stonehouse Market Farm to visit my buddy Jackson and he um, gave us kind of a rundown of their high tunnel and what they did right and kind of what they wish they'd done, um, how they got the money for it and some interesting things about that loan. So that's what today's gonna, video is gonna be about is that specific situation. Jackson is so brilliant and I love talking to him. Uh, also, you'll notice he's wearing this slick little hat the whole time. You can get this hat if you go over there to patreon.com slash farmer jesse and sign up to be a rad hatter. It's the tier, it's $35. You get a hat and you also get access to the videos and stuff that we have over there. The idea is to get more people to sign up for the Patreon page and also just raise a little extra funds going into the winter so we can do some cool stuff with this page, with the podcast, and then with the bonus videos. Um, as always, this stuff will always be free. The podcast will always be free. The uh, videos will always be free. The Patreon page is just kind of for people who want a little bit more nerdy detail. And it's a super small investment in your education of two or five dollars a month or whatever you can afford. But we're jamming that thing full of value over this winter. So go check that out. Also, I will be doing a live Q&A, no-till Q&A with Joshua Satin on the Satin Hill Farm YouTube channel. Um, so go check that out. That'll be on Friday at 6.30 p.m. October 18th, whatever that Friday is close to that number. Um, I'm gonna quit rambling. Here's Jackson. We got the funding for the tunnel through the uh, USDA. So that's how we got our farm loan. So you were, you were talking about um, opportunities for funding for beginning farmers. In the last video, uh, we went through the USDA and got a beginning farm loan uh, for the farm. And then we did a micro loan for this high tunnel. And that's the FSA, the micro loan. I mean, I know that's the, they're related, but like the FSA yeah. is a... Um, I believe the FSA is the micro loan. Okay. Because um, that's they, the they up to $50,000. Correct. They right. were two separate loans. Yeah. So we had a farm, we have a farm ownership loan, uh, just to get into the, to the nitty gritty details, because that's what people want to hear. So we bought this farm. It's a hair under 10 acres with a home uh, for... Uh, just over a hundred thousand for a 35 year term at like three, if I remember right, it's three, either 3.25 or three and a half percent interest, which is super reasonable. That is super low. It's yeah, that's great. Really good. And the, the great thing about it, again, if I have my details right, if we want to buy more land through that loan, we get that same interest rate, no matter what the interest rate does. Wow. So if interest rates skyrocket, we have a locked in three and a half percent conceivably interest rate. Um, and you might want to look into it. I believe my kids have that same option. If we, if we're still under that loan. So and, it gets grandfathered in, or in this case, fathered in. So if Avery or Arlo or Elias want to buy a farm, um, I think you're going to have to check the details. Uh, yeah, that's cool. That's worth which looking is really, into. Which is really interesting. It's really yeah. interesting. When you think in, in terms of generationally, uh, you know, if they want to maybe expand and buy an adjoining field, or if I want to buy an adjoining field, hopefully, yeah. um, I'll have that interest rate. Because I think it's a reasonable interest rate, especially when you stretch it out to 35 or 40 years. Um, but then we did a micro loan for the tunnel. And the details on that, this tunnel, it's a 30 by 150. Uh, we had the extra high sidewalls put in. Um, it was with installation 16,000, and that's seven years at three and a half points. Uh, so we pay out of pocket about 2,500 a year for this tunnel. If you're single cropping, that doesn't make a lot of sense unless you're doing like a lot of really good tomato production uh, but we're 
getting at least two if not three crops out of some of these beds a year when I expand I would really like to also be doing like summer rounds of sun hemp and maybe cow peas in the tunnel as well so I can alternate tunnels but but for right now we just use what we've got um, I split it in half laterally so I've got like early winter beds here and late winter beds there so that ginger and the late tomatoes will come out and that'll be planted some of it in probably December and some of it in probably February so I feel like we did this part of the tunnel correctly. It's this part of the tunnel that I feel like we uh, dropped the ball on. What I wish we had done is taken the additional two or three thousand dollars that we're actually already out of pocket right now anyways without the loan um, to go ahead and complete it the way that I envisioned it. Because I want a gravel and eventually a concrete floor and this is going to be a dual purpose Greenhouse on the left and wash pack on the right. Um, we've got a cooler trailer with a cool bot that we're going to park in the corner. But I wanted gravel floors with some drain line, um, the fans on the vents, um, what else? Water. So getting the water piped in, we did that after the fact. I wish we had taken out the money to do all of these little things and get this functional uh, to begin with, to set it up right the first time. So when you were doing it, your original thought was, we'll get the tunnel up, we'll get you know, this section ready for crops so that we're, we have some cash flow, and then when we have the money, we'll just slowly build it. That was your original thinking yeah. when putting this up? Yeah, uh, and I wish, now in, in some cases I think that's appropriate, but if you're already putting this structure up, finish it. I'm not saying you've got to get the you know the most high-tech everything there are things I want to add on later that I wouldn't buy right now like automated sidewall curtains you know so maybe so maybe you know thermostatic features and things that I think you can live without I don't know I, I wish put the money on the loan and finish this out in the beginning because I mean you can see all of the junk that I have on the floor I've been tripping over all of this all season all summer um, because what has happened is things have just turned into piles in here. This has always been a, I'll get to it when I get to it sort of project. Uh, so nothing's had a permanent home in here. All of my starts have been on random pallets that I've set up. Now part of that is a, is a you know, a personal thing. I'm not the most organized in the world. Um, but I definitely think it would help me stay organized if I had just finished it. And if everything in here had a home. Uh, I think that's that's an interesting idea just thinking about like, if you're gonna put any sort of foundation in here to just go ahead and get it done. Or if you're doing a wash pack. Right, the water. Wash pack. Yeah. Get, get the things that you need. You don't have to spring for the highest tech or the, or the really expensive stuff. Um, like, you know, putting up this tunnel. Uh, I don't know for me that a ridge vent would have been worth the money, you know. I'm not saying put a ridge vent in your tunnel, uh, but um get it get the project done uh before you need to inhabit the space uh you know i've been this this section to the right behind you was supposed to be wash packed and i've been washing and packing under a shade tree all spring summer and fall so backing up how i would do it differently is take the money out get get all of this section of the tunnel done before I even put anything in it. Um, it would have been done before I planted it. Right, because there is the element of now that you have all this stuff here, so that's gotta come out for you to be able to finish oh, yeah. it. I mean, it's gonna be half a day to remove everything, um, but it's it's still gonna be another few days worth of work to get this, to get the gravel foundation in uh, and get everything back to where I want it. Um, you know, and when you think about all of that time adding up throughout the course of the season, I've spent a lot of time tripping over myself in this space that I need to be. And that's out there. That's labor, work. so it's even more expensive than what's yeah. coming out of pocket. Yeah, if you pencil that out, I, I easily wasted many hundreds of dollars just trying to exist in this unorganized space in labor. Yeah. Um, 
And it's amazing too because you, it's like, this is such a realistic thing because you would think, oh, I'm gonna keep it super organized. But in the middle of the season, especially in June, July, you know, when I you're really going, yeah. it's you're just gonna set stuff down. That's just right. the nature of it. I keep thinking of those pegboards where you have the outline of the tool drawn on the pegboard. Right. That is the level of organization you need when the height of the summer hits for things to go back in their place. You need that system set up. You need it set up ahead of time. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that yeah. so that stuff has a home. If it doesn't have a home, it's never going to be put back in its home. And then you've got, you know, 40, 50, 60 trays just spread out on the ground. <laughs> you know, uh, I mean, we've made it work, but we've definitely wasted a lot of time dealing with this with this section right here. But one of the things that I do appreciate is that we did have the forethought, if we're going to spend all of this money on this building, we're going to fit as many functions into it as humanly possible. So once this is finished, we'll have a curtained off greenhouse space, a, a three season wash pack area, and we'll have a 16, 60 foot production bed, um, all in a $16,000 structure. We're, we're also thinking about that too when we go on to add on a future wash pack area. Well, what else can we cram in that if we're going to have a dedicated wash pack area, say like a steel structure? Can we also fit a farm stand in it? Can we also fit an office in it? Can we also fit a... So say if we build a 30 by 30 building, how many functions can we stack in that one 30 by 30 building? Right. So Especially we don't profitable. Have to have another building profitable functions like this like having right. this filled with so many things that are actually generating revenue right or even in the future if we think of intern apprentice housing can we build a, a second story onto that structure a small second story and have housing since we're already going to be running water and electric and all of those things can we also add a living space to that 30 by 30 structure so that we're not gonna have to also build another thing or have another thing to maintain on the property. Yeah, this is, it's it's so interesting because this is kind of what I was thinking about when I was talking in that last video, just about that last of the beginning farmer series about being undercapitalized and still feeling the effects. Oh yeah, absolutely. Like, I think of well, this structure as, as kind of that where it's like, you've got this generating revenue and great cash flow, but then simultaneously you have this other section that's still bogging you down. Um, yeah. And I, I, I don't disagree with taking your time and building up some capital or finding those resources in the beginning. Um, but you, you've got to farm enough to know at least where you want to start. Yep. Um, and I, I know that we want to expand and do a little more perennial production. I'm really interested in getting into small ruminant rotational grazing and silvopasture and those things. Those will come later. But I know, and this is something that I think was really valuable that I picked up watching a lot of Perkins, was get the cash flow part of your business down first. And with a farm, more often than not, it seems like a small market garden is very quick cash flowing. Um, but even then you want to set it up so that it's more cash flow and less wasted space and effort. Um, yeah. I, so yeah, yeah, that's great. All right. I hope you all enjoyed that. Uh, like this video. If you like this video, go make sure to check out patreon.com slash farmer Jesse snag yourself a hat. They are limited. There's not that many. Go check that out. Other than that, you all thank you for watching. We'll see you next week. Bye. Did I tell you we got a new puppy? Here it comes. Pup, pup, pup. Here she is.